Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here today, and today I'm taking a look at installing VirtualBox, Oracle's uh, uh, free um, uh, virtualization software. It runs quite well on MX14 if you have a uh, decent computer uh, that supports hardware virtualization, especially. Um, so there's a couple ways to install it. Um, you can download it direct from the website. I'm going to show you another method first. Uh, you can open up Synaptic. MX actually comes with the uh, repository pre-configured, but it's not enabled for VirtualBox. So you open up, go to Settings, and then Repositories. And if you scroll down in the list, you're going to see download.virtualbox.org/virtualbox/debian. You want to check that. Click OK. It's going to tell you to reload. That's what you want to do. So I reload the repositories. Of course, this all depends on your speed of your internet connection. And what you're going to get, you're going to get the option to install VirtualBox from Synaptic. Now you can search for it, just search for VirtualBox if you like. VirtualBox. You'll get a list of all the VirtualBox packages. Now what you want is not VirtualBox or VirtualBox DBG or DKMS or Fuse or any of these things. These are these are uh, Debian hosted systems. You want either 4.2 or 4.3. These are the versions hosted by um, Oracle. You can look at that in the properties. You can click on uh, let's see uh, Oracle Com uh, maintainer blah 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 dependencies versions. Here we go. Download.virtualbox.org. So it's going to tell you that's the right one. That's the one you want. It's the latest, mate, latest version. The advantage of installing from Synaptic is that and leaving the repository enabled is that any updates that come down will come down automatically. It's very handy. I am going to though install it from the downloaded file. Um, I'm going to leave the repository enabled though because even if you install from the file, if you leave the repository enabled, it'll still pick up the updates. So we'll go to downloads on the virtualbox.org site. And what you're going to want is you're going to click here, VirtualBox for Linux host. Now this is 4.3. If, if you want an older version, uh, you can you can pick it up down here. Uh, And you're going to look for the Debian 7 Wheezy. Now, Wheezy is not, or um, MX is a 32 bit install. Even if you have a 64 bit computer, you want the i386 package. So you want to download that. And it, it's, it's a fairly healthy download, 67.2 megs. I've already downloaded it, so we'll, uh, we'll close out a Cubzilla here and open up my file browser and go to downloads. And you can see. 4.3.4. Um, this is the same file as if you went through Synaptic. It's exactly the same file. So I'll click it and open up GDEBI. And it's going to look for dependencies. By default, you should not have any any extra dependencies for VirtualBox. It should be good to go. So yeah, see, here's where I have the uh, um, it says same versions available in the software channel. That's because I have the repo enabled. If you don't have the repo enabled till after you do this, uh, you won't have that problem. Or it's not really a problem, it's just an inf information. So I'm going to install it. Now this install actually takes some time because it has to build some kernel packages, um, kernel modules rather, and do some other actually relatively, um, you know, for most software you wouldn't actually need to do. Um, we'll crack open the terminal here and you'll see there, there's going to be a couple errors you can, it's safe to ignore. Everything's happening. It's here's installing some new drivers, um, registering the VB kernels. Uh, this won't take too awful long, but you'll see it. Um, anyway, it's interesting if you want to learn what's kind of what's going on. It's installing some new services and, and things. It's not necessary to leave this open. But the installation will take a minute or three. I am going to... Uh, pause until the installation is complete. Okay, so now we're all finished. It, uh, it did its thing. It installed the modules, updated the menus, and we're all set. So we're going to click. We can close GDB now. One other thing that you probably are going to want is the, um, the extension pack uh, that's available. 
uh, that will enable you to uh, use um, will enable you to use USB 2.0 among other things if your system supports it. So if you go back to the VirtualBox downloads area, you're going to see the VirtualBox 4.3 Oracle extension pack. All supported platforms. It doesn't matter. You click this, it downloads. You click this button right here. Down it comes, and you can install. I'll show you how to install it here in just a sec. So we're done with the file manager. I'm going to open up VirtualBox now. It's in a system where you can type in VirtualBox in the search window, and it'll come right up. Oracle VirtualBox. Okay, and that's going to let you set up a new virtual machine. Now I'm going to show you a couple quick and dirties. I'm going to set up an antics machine which is Linux and is actually Debian. The version I'm using is 32-bit. That's fine. I'm going to leave a 512. I've got plenty of RAM on this machine. I could have used more. I'll create a virtual hard drive. I usually go with the defaults for most things unless I have a special need. Um, for the purpose of this, VDI, that's the, that's the basic virtual box system. Well, you keep the dynamically allocated file. 8 gigabytes, that's plenty. Virtual uh, Antics needs like 2.5 or something once it's installed. Um, that's not very big. Uh, so Antics, that's good. Create the file. Create the whole thing. And now we have a virtual machine. And this is the screen whereby you, cre you create your virtual hardware. A uh, couple things you might want to enable. In uh, general, let's see. Journal tab. Uh, this is all looks good. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, okay, that's basic stuff. System is. It, it, you want to check a couple things. If your processor enables it, it supports it. Use the PAE NEX extensions that will allow uh, PAE kernels to operate inside VirtualBox. And also on acceleration, make sure these two tabs are 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 selected so that you can use the hardware capabilities of your CPU for the virtualization. On my HP laptop, I had to enable the hardware virtualization uh, options in my BIOS. So be aware you may have to do that. Uh, display uh, doesn't doesn't much matter here. If you want to try 3D acceleration, you can, but you're going to need to set, set more video RAM. And you can actually uh, does some rudimentary video capture on its own. Storage, this is where you're going to give it a CD. I'm going to choose a virtual CD disk. Uh, let's see, Dolphin uh, downloads my Antics ISO. And you can configure the audio network. Ah, USB. If you have the uh, extension packs installed, and I do in this case, then you can use the USB 2.0 uh, uh, controller. If you need to install the extension packs, you go to um, Preferences and Extensions and select, there'll be a button to add the package and you'll just scroll here and add the package. It's very simple to do. There's one more thing you need to do to get your USB, if you want to be able to use USB sticks, is you have to add your user not your virtual box user, but your actual Linux user, in my case, uh, Dolphin, uh, needs to be part of the VBox users group. So it's very easy to do in MX. Uh, the, v the group is actually created when you install the deb file. But what we're going to do, we'll go down here to Systems and MX User Manager. And actually, this is really slick. Root password, because we're going to be modifying some system level information. And we're going to come over here to Group Membership. And we want to select the user to change. In my case, I only have one user, Dolphin. And now here is all the groups that I can be a part of. And here's VBox users. Checkbox, you're done. Click Apply, click OK. Yes, make the change. Change has been applied. We're happy campers. I'm sure you want changes. Yes, uh, apparently OK and apply both do that. So there we go. So I'm now part of the uh, user group and I can use USB sticks. Once you're all configured you hit start on your thing and the operating system will start and you have a virtual machine happening. So that's it. That's how easy it is to set up VirtualBox in MX14. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mepiscommunity.org slash mx or put up a post at forms.mepiscommunity.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.